absolute craziness on the vlog today, doing something I've never done before. I'm going to attempt. I'm going to attempt to film the entire vlog in one clip. Why am I doing that? Because it's Friday, it's heading toward 5 p.m., which means I need to eat dinner, edit this vlog, and then get to bed. Because I gotta wake up early, real early, like about 4.30ish. And so, therefore, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna walk you through the entire house, all the gear laid out for the Pikes Peak Ascent, and then, yes, walk you through my Pikes Peak race strategy here. I've just written it down on the paper. I've been thinking about it for a long time, but especially over the past seven days, and so now it's down on paper, so I'm gonna walk you through that. And so I want this, I wanna edit the vlog pretty quickly tonight, very quickly. That's why you got, you, you're witnessing history here today, although I've never done this before. One clip. Okay, let's start in the kitchen. I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and walk you around here. Let's rock and roll. Okay, hopefully the white balance is not too crazy. Well, just gonna have to deal with it, folks. Just gonna have to deal with it. Okay, here we go. So, I have the coffee ready. I've got my breakfast ready, uh, snacks for the car, and then I'll pull out a couple more items in the morning from the fridge. So, here it is. I've got my banana. Here, I'll just let you look at it. I got a banana, Lara bar, some oat, um, oatmeal muffins with chocolate chips that True Love made, and then just some raisins for a little snack in the car, and then, oh, butter my bread, butter my bread, little Seek Beauty, work hard and love each other from that coffee pot, all right? So there you go. There is the kitchen. Feeling real good about the food situation. Moving on to the, where should I go next? Hmm. Let's go to the drop bag. Let's go to the drop bag right here. So this is the bag number 103 that's gonna go to the top of the mountain. There we go, which matches my bib number. And these are the items, If it could, frankly, it could be snowing, it's not going to, I don't think, that's not the weather prediction, but we are talking about 14,000 feet above sea level. So it could be snowing up there. So I've got some warm clothes. I've got, uh, yes, I'm sending the GoPro up the mountain. Hopefully they don't lose it, right? And then uh, my Solomon hat. So here is the gear going in the drop bag. And then I will place my phone in the drop bag as well uh, in the morning. And that'll go to the top as well so I can communicate with all of you. Uh, okay, moving on. Shall we do it here? Let's do, uh, we're gonna save that for last actually. So this uh, the I, blue Ikea bag is going to be uh, all the gear for the warm up and the cool down. Um, I, excuse me, for the cool down. All of this is for the cool down and then hanging out afterward for the party and just like pizza and beer and oh, seeing the family, you better believe it. There's the real motivation for this race right there. Uh, so I will be bringing that. And then over here, let me make sure there's enough light. Oh boy, um, it's hard not being able to see in the camera, but basically I'm gonna have a couple items in the front seat of my car, like the anti-chafing uh, solve, the squirrel's nut butter. I'm gonna have my foam roller, and then I'm going to have uh, a couple gels. Let me just bump up the ISO here. Uh, there is that. So there's the foam roller. I'm not gonna use this guy. There's the gels. There's my stretching. So I will use those items immediately after the warm up. There's my warm up shoes, the beacon, the beacon V2s, and then here is the squirrel's nut butter. And then along with just you know the keys for the car, my wallet, sunglasses. Not my not my racing sunglasses, but um, just my drive down and warm up sunglasses. And then. Here on the door, this is a big tip of the day. If you know, like you don't wanna forget something, if you have a one exit out your house, make sure you make a note. So I wanna make sure I don't forget my water bottle. So there's a paper note, that's right, a good old classic paper note for that. And last but not least, oh, bada bing, bada boom, the good stuff, uh, the racing kit, it's ready. Oh, tip number two of the day charge your watch. I just got done charging my watch. It's at 100%, so we're good to go there. I, I, I didn't almost forget, but I forgot to tell you that yesterday. Charge your running watch. So here it is. Boom. Let me just drop the ISO again. Sorry about that. Hold on. Boom. So here we go. We got the racing socks, the Solomon S-Lab Sense 7SGs. We've got the uh, the Nike shorts, oh, love it. You got my gel already tucked away in the pouch. 
You've got the watch that's charged. You got the bib number already pinned on. Seek beauty, work hard, love each other. Sunglasses are in here, and yes, I've already, I, I know I'm very particular, but I've already like cleaned them, the sunglasses, like got all the, you know, the thumbprints off of them and whatever, sweat, all that good stuff. Uh, so they are clean and in the case. And then the halo headband, there it is, there it is, just to keep, keep that sweat out of the eyeballs. Okay, that's the gear. And I will load, okay, the light went out. Hold on, I'm, I'm not giving up on this one clip wonder here. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let me just turn this light back on. Um, again, doing this to uh, just cut down a little bit on editing tonight so I can go to bed as early as possible. All right, love you guys. Here we are, the race strategy for the 2019 Pikes Peak Ascent. This is the 64th running of the Pikes Peak Ascent. Uh, the race has 7,815 feet of vertical gain which is 2,382 meters. The race starts at 6,300 feet above sea level in Manitou Springs, Colorado, right on the main street. And uh, let's see, the start is at 7 a.m. mountain time. So depending on when you're watching this, I literally could be running up the mountain right now as you're watching this. Uh, okay, so the gun goes off, 7 a.m., boom. Uh, I take off. The fast guys that take off for some reason in the first quarter mile. I'm going to let them go just like two years ago. Um, so you go down the main street, then you take a hard left and you start climbing up the mountain on pavement. And so when I take that hard left, which is approximately at about the half mile mark, approximately at that point, I want to be right around the top 10. Listen, I see no reason to spike the heart rate early in a race. So I'm going to let the crazies go out crazy. And, uh, but I will be, you know, around the top 10 at that left when you start the, the gentle climb on the pavement. And then the next, you know, three quarters of a mile to a mile, let's just call it at the 1.5 mile mark. You are, you actually start to really climb right around the cog railway in case you're in, uh, familiar with that. But then another about two or 300 meters, you finally hit the dirt. And that is where you catch uh, the trail and you go from, you know, a, a narrow road down to a trail. And at that point, I have learned over time that I, it takes a lot of energy to pass runners on trails. You know, you, you're wasting energy trying to sprint by them or yell at them and say, hey, coming up on your left. So my goal uh, when we hit the dirt is to be definitely top five, possibly top three, depending on how I'm feeling. Of course, I'm going to be listening to all the competitors around me, listening to their breathing, uh, watching their, their cadence, look at their arm carriage, how do they look. And frankly, I, I don't want to mess around with passing people uh, from a mile and a half to the 3.3 mile mark. And just a little side note, I break down my races into quarters. Some people do it into thirds. I prefer quarters because of my track background, four laps for a mile. It's just easier in my head. So 3.3 is the quarter mark. I know exactly where that mark is on the course because I've run Pikes Peak three times, four times this summer, not to mention a winter. So I know exactly where it's at. And I'm just gonna say this, um, that I took some risks in this training block because of the foot injury. And uh, I went from zero to 100 miles a week in five weeks. I, I counted it up on Strava yesterday. Zero, meaning like, you know, because of the phantom pain. So July 1st to uh, late July, early August, I don't remember, but it was five weeks by the time I was at 100 miles a week. And I held that for two weeks. I feel good about that, holding it for two weeks. That was a risk. Don't do that. Don't do that, anyone. Uh, but I knew what I needed to do to get ready as best as I possibly could for, as best as I possibly can, could, can, for this Pikes Peak Ascent. Therefore, frankly, at this point, I have embraced the fact, and I'm going to spend a little more time just reflecting in this comfy chair here in a minute, but um, I took risks in training. I ran a very, very good time on Gray's Peak exactly, actually, seven days ago from today. And um, I'm gonna take a risk in this race. Not crazy risk, calculated risk, but I'm, I'm not gonna hold back. I'm not gonna hold back at all. Um, in the, I'll hold back the first half mile. I'll hold back the first, frankly, mile and a half on pavement. 
But then once the dirt hits, I'm going to I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm not going to wait to the 3.3 mile mark. Now I'm not going to go crazy. Don't worry. I'm not going to like go out and sprint as hard as I can, but I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to go a little bit. Um, all the way. So remember the four and a half mile mark, it starts to level off a little bit and you can really start to roll out some miles. So from four and a half to 6.6, .6, which is the half mile mark, the last training run that I did on Pikes Peak at that 6.6 .6 mile mark, I came through in 102, an hour and two minutes. And I think I can get to the halfway point in sub 56 ish, ish. Okay. Right around that 50. I think I can cut five minutes approximately off of that 102, uh, five to six minutes off of that 102 for the halfway point. Moving along to, and I'm not going to go through the aid stations, moving and okay, and I'll also talk about, okay, here we go. So at the nine point, let's just call it 10 mile mark, 9.9 .9 miles, so the three quarters of the way done, uh, that is 12,098 feet above sea level or 3,687 meters. I expect one or two competitors to be around me at that point. They might be ahead, they might be behind, I don't know. But I expect it, I expect, I don't say at least, I expect one or two competitors around me at the 9.9 .9 mile mark, which is tree line. If you're familiar with the mountains here in Colorado, that's tree line, and you basically have a 5K to go. And in my mind, how I break it down, 5K is 12 laps around a track. I can do that, 12 and some, and some change. I can run 12 laps hard and I can do it at elevation for sure. So my goal is to be in the hunt um, at the 9.9 .9 mile mark, the three quarters of the way mark. And we'll see who's around. We'll see who's around. Um, and then the finish 13.2 is 14,115 feet above sea level or 4,302 meters. I have some notes written down on the bottom for motivation. Float it. Don't fight it. Eyes up. Eyes up. Pump arms. Quick feet. Eyes up. Pump arms. Quick feet. And I have a couple more notes, but they are personal, and I'm going to save them for myself as motivation for this race. So that is the deal, and we're going to go with the keyword of strategy. We're going to go with the question of the day. Do you, for peak races, write down a race strategy? Do you break it down, whether it's on your computer, uh, on a piece of paper? This is how I do it, and I will, um, I will go into maybe more detail on what's on this piece of paper after the race. Folks, this is it. I love you. Thanks for coming on this journey. It's been a fun one, a good training block, and I am... Uh, I'm excited. So stay tuned everywhere. I'm sure you'll know how I did before I even do. And um, let's do this. All right. All right. And here's a couple old blogs uh, from this training block. Just uh, some good hard work. Some good hard work through this training block on the right or the left. No messing around, folks. Let's go get it. See beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.